Council Member for District 4 and Council President Pro Tem for the City of San Diego, Monica Montgomery, step with me this evening. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to ask to here. a couple quick questions. We're going to time them as well, beginning with the first one. If you're ready, let's go for it. Okay. All right. Question number one. Uh, rent is expensive. Mortgages are high. A recent study found that nearly 60% of homes in San Diego are selling for more than a million dollars at this point. Uh, some people are choosing to leave or unfortunately ending up on our streets of San Diego. Uh, what do you, uh, what can you do to help fix that uh, if you end up with a position as supervisor? Two minutes on the clock, starting now. Yes, well, we know that the data tells us that for every 10 people that are able to exit homelessness, 13 people are entering homelessness for the first time. And a lot of that is coming from the economic conditions which we have right now in, in the entire region, in this region and county of San Diego. So uh, I think building upon the housing stock that we have is extremely important, making sure that we deal with market demand. Um, there are a lot of ways the county can help to do that. Um, one of them is streamlining permitting for building of housing, especially affordable housing. Another way is to continue to put money into the county's innovative housing trust fund. A lot of the affordable housing projects that we have within the county are uh, missing, you know, a gap funding. They're, they are able to go online, if, but for uh, gap funding that they are missing. So that trust fund really allows for the county to help with affordable housing in order to relieve that that gap that a lot of developers um, are having. But, you know, this is an issue that is statewide. Um, it's an issue that California is really struggling with. Um, in the meantime, while we build, we really do need to, I believe, provide help for people. Uh, rental subsidies is very, very important because, yes, we need to build but the time is now and people are struggling now. And so using uh, the county's funding and resources to help people stay in their homes is extremely important to me and I will work my hardest to make sure that that happens. All right, council member, you still got 14 seconds on the clock. Would you like to use them? I think we're good. All right, so we will cancel those. Thank you very much for that answer. On to question number two. Uh, we ask our elected officials all types of questions and demand all kinds of things across the board. And sometimes we find out uh, they don't have the purview of that or they don't have the breath to achieve that. What do you think is the purpose of a county board of supervisors? Two minutes on the clock, starting now. Yes, well, the county board of supervisors really deal and have to center people, especially our most vulnerable communities. A lot of the county's $8.1 billion budget goes to health and human services. And so that uh, is providing resources and services around behavioral health, uh, around uh, mental health services, uh, the foster care, uh, strengthening families, um, aging and independent services. There's so much infrastructure there for the county where we really, really can help people, especially when they are in their most vulnerable state. And so the County Board of Supervisors has a great responsibility uh, to, to help people that need them the most um, and that are really suffering, especially in the times that we have right now around uh, housing, um, you know, when folks get sick and cannot work, um, they have to go to the county to receive services so that they can still survive and live in, in San Diego. So the, the job is extremely important, but there's another part of the job as well. Essentially, the County Board of Supervisor uh, is a, a mayor or a council member for a lot of the unincorporated areas that do not have a government structure within them. And so for this particular seat, uh, areas in the East County in particular, uh, Spring Valley, Casa de Oro, Mount Helix, um, those are the unincorporated areas where the supervisor would be serving as uh, a council member, essentially, and would be uh, making land use decisions, uh, fixing roads, uh, that type of thing for those unincorporated areas. So there's a, a vast amount of jurisdiction for the supervisors. Council member, uh, eight seconds on the clock. Would you like to run it down or keep going? I think we're good. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll go ahead and there's your alarm on that one. Uh, question number three, uh, you spent time and effort 
putting together a campaign as you run for this seat, uh, but what do you want voters to know that they won't find on your campaign website or by Googling you or trying to look you up in any which way or form? Two minutes, go for it. Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I really want people to know the heart of me, like what drives me to do this and to serve people in this way. Uh, my grandmother was the youngest of 13 children. Uh, they came here uh, to San Diego from Mississippi. My father's people are from uh, Texas by way of Louisiana. And so, you know, we have a very large family network and it was really about love and taking care of each other. And that's how I approach this job. I approach it with what I learned um, from my family, which was that you know, providing unconditional love for people is very, very important. Showing compassion should be our core value and sh it should drive everything that we do. And I don't think I can express that in the website, right? I have my strong beliefs, strong political beliefs um, that I fight for every single day. But in the times that we are in, it's so important right now that we have people in office that show compassion people in office that break down barriers and break down silos. That has really been my life's work from uh, helping people keep their homes during the foreclosure crisis back in 2008, 2009, uh, to leading a local uh, campaign on bail reform um, at the ACLU to break that cycle of poverty that we often see um, to doing what I'm doing now and really challenging um, the city and myself and others to think about the way that we make decisions in the city um, and think about our most vulnerable communities and think about how we can all thrive in this great region, in this great county. So um, I hope that that gives a little bit of the heart of me, who I am, you know, as a person and how I would lead. There we go. All right. You hit the alarm on that one. We'll go ahead and cancel that alarm. And then council member, um, we are at the point where uh, ballot drop boxes are open. Uh, voters are getting ready, trying to look up the final details uh, and get to know uh, their candidates before they actually cast you know, that ever important ballot in the special election. Uh, two minutes now at the end for you to use as you'd like, state your case, say whatever you'd like uh, to the folks out there of San Diego who might be voting for you. Two minutes on the clock. Yes, so this is a, a short election. <laughs> you know, it's it's been a, a, almost three months, really. Um, and I hope that I get the opportunity to talk to as many voters as possible before August 15th. But I want everyone to know that I am a staunch supporter and believer in our communities, in our neighborhoods in what the people that live here have to say, that we have built out in my office a community governance model where we take community input, we merge that with policy, and we try to work those things through a system. It has been a very successful venture doing it. It has been very hard because we have a lot of different perspectives, um, a lot of diversity of thought, but I think this is the only way that we can continue to build trust in our government. We, we have to listen to people. So I have been a strong supporter of economic opportunity for all people. I have been a strong supporter for safe and healthy communities. I have been a strong advocate for accountability uh, within our public safety realm so that we can continue to build trust in community and law enforcement. And so I will continue to bring forward the types of solutions that I brought forward uh, in this region, been a regional leader uh, in the area of first time home buyer and home ownership, a regional leader um, with regard to police reform. Um, it has actually made many of our communities much safer. And so I'm looking forward to continuing this work on a broader scale. Council member, five seconds on the clock. Would you like to say anything else? <laughs> Thank you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and there is the alarm on that one. Uh, City of San Diego District 4 Council Member and Council President Pro Tem at the moment, Monica Montgomery Stepp, running for the vacant County Board of Supervisors seat. Thank you so much for your time.
Thank you. Thank you very much for doing this.